In this video, we're tackling a definite integral sine of pi x cosine of pi x. And I'm going to approach this first with an informal strategy. And then we're going to look at a formal u substitution approach as an alternative way of doing the problem. So what I noticed in my original integral is I have a sine pi x. And I'll deal with the pi later. But it's basically sitting right next to the derivative of sine pi x. So I have a function sitting right next to its derivative. And this allows me to see how the chain rule is going to operate backwards. Of course, I should take care of the missing factor of pi real quick before I do anything. And I'm just going to emphasize that I have sine pi x to the first power sitting right next to the derivative of sine pi x. Well, that's going to be cosine pi x times pi. So I've got to put in a factor of pi to actually make that literally equal to the derivative of sine pi x. And of course, I can't just throw around factors of pi whenever I want. I've got to compensate out in front by putting a 1 over pi. So this is really a function composition. The inner function is sine pi x. It's raised to the first power. The derivative of the inner function is sitting right here. And with the derivative of the inner function sitting there, I recognize what the chain rule has done in the reverse direction. So this is just a variable thing to the first power, and that integrates to that variable thing to the second power divided by 2, so I'll put a 1 half out in front. I still need to evaluate this from 0 to 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and put a 2 pi in that denominator out in front, and then I have the sine of pi times x squared. Plugging in a 1 half, that's sine of pi over 2 squared. In my lower limit, I have the sine of pi times 0 all squared, and the sine of 0 is 0. So that term is gone. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. So I end up with a grand total of 1 over 2 pi. Now I suppose there are varying degrees of formality that we could use if we're going to use formal u substitutions on this integral. And maybe the ultimate formal approach is to explicitly sub out for that pi x piece. So that's my innermost piece. That's my motivation here. And I'm going to say let u equal pi x. That means du is pi dx is just the derivative of this multiplied by dx. And I'm going to transform my limits of integration at the same time. So when x is equal to 0, I can tell from the definition of u up here that u is going to be 0. And when x is equal to 1 half, u is going to be pi over 2. Now in order to see du in my integral, I've got to have a pi in front of dx. So basically, I can just put that into the interior of the integral and compensate for it out in front. Now my integral has been transformed. It's 1 over pi. Integral as u goes from 0 to pi over 2, sine u, cosine u, du. And if you don't recognize this integrand informally, you can make another substitution. So again, I notice that I have a sine u here and essentially the derivative of that here. So I'm going to make a new substitution. I'll make this a v substitution, and I'll say let v equal sine u. Then dv is the derivative of that cosine u du, and that's a good thing because I just found dv sitting in my integral. And I can say when u is equal to 0, v is the sine of 0, which is 0. And when u is equal to pi over 2, v is the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. And I've transformed my integral once again. I have 1 over pi integral from 0 to 1. Sine u is v. Cosine u du is dv. And now I have this guessable integrand. When I integrate v, I get 1 half v squared. Moving the 2 out in front, that's a 1 over 2 pi. v squared as v goes from 0 to 1. When I plug in the lower limit, of course, I get 0, because 0 squared is 0. Plug in the upper limit, and you get 1 for this piece. And I end up with a grand total of 1 over 2 pi. So I would hope with some practice, your work starts to look a little more like the informal approach and a little less like this overly formal approach. You'll save yourself a lot of work doing it that way, and especially when an integral like this pops up inside the context of an even bigger problem. You don't want to have this huge distraction of multiple substitutions happening when you're already dealing with some other larger, difficult problem. If you find the math content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel.
I produce dozens of new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.